So is this like step two, what, after you get the metal pieces off? Depends on the neck. All, every neck is different. So you got a little piece of sandpaper there and you're cleaning it up? Very light cleanup because this neck is, is perfectly straight for the type of fresh job I'm going to do on it. That's 800 grit sandpaper right there. Dry, 800 dry. Okay, so. And, 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 and I'm not going to refinish this neck. It's going to look more like a vintage neck when it's done. Not, not all worn out and stuff, but I'm going to polish it only with a rag. It'll bring the gloss back because I'm never going to touch this neck with anything more than this 800 grit paper right here. So let's just smooth it out before you get ready to put the... No, because there's a slight ridge of the lacquer, see? Oh, not the lacquer, but in this case, whatever that crap is that Fender used. I don't want to get involved in all of that. And when this guitar the so fret job is done, the neck. it'll just look like it was played longer, but it'll have beautiful frets on it. It's barely taking the finger dirt off. See, that's still finger scum right there. And that really, all that this neck needs is that right there. So it's not quite as shiny now. Well, that, what, watch, when I'm done with that fret job, I can put that shine right back with just a rag, you know, oh, let alone yeah. put a little compound on it, you know. So you don't have to over, what I'm trying to show you here is you don't have to be overdone. See, that's just still finger dirt right there. You don't have to overdo planing of a neck. Okay, if the neck is already straight and fine, the guy just wore the frets off, why would you take this finish off and get involved with that and have to charge him more money for that? This is not an expensive guitar. It's a $900 guitar. Doing a good fret job means a good fret job for the guitar somebody handed you, not the same thing for every guitar. So if this was a $200,000 vintage guitar, you would be doing a different thing. They probably wouldn't even be refretting it. Yeah, I would be doing it slightly different. Now the depth of these slots is okay, so for these, for these slots, since the depth is okay, this isn't the bench I would normally What's do this thing? on. I would normally move this to the other bench. This is just a saw, but I literally do not have to cut here. All I have to do is clean. So you're just getting okay. the dust that you just created. Dust and a little bit of, they used super glue on the outside ends, like most modern guitars do. I can feel it when I come to both ends. I'm just cleaning it out of there, okay? So you're just barely touching it. Barely touching it. Now, different guitars, depends on how much work's been done on it. If it's been fretted before, you if know. If they fret it too many times, do those notches get real big? Fret it more than once, they get too big. I mean, you got to be very careful. Do they have bigger... you got to understand that. you got to understand that. Nope, that's the problem. They don't make a, they don't make a refret wire. you got to understand that the whole thing about frets is all wrong, right from the word go. Okay? So... So you're just preserving the original wood as much as possible there. Yeah, and then I'm going to reshape the tang in the new frets to fit these slots. I'll, I'll, I'll put a caliper on these slots and figure out what they, what they are. And a caliper, yeah, a measurement device, and a caliper on my Jazz Car 6105 wire, which I already know what it is, but you've you got to check it because different runs are different. Okay, and I will then um, decide... I'm, I'm not removing any wood here, okay? You're just... It sounds like it, but that's crunchy crunch that's super glue, glue coming out of the ends, okay? The dust that you're My first pull is a back pull, and it's really all I need. The forward pull just runs it clean back through. So this is the quickest part here. Don't overthink. Again, don't overthink replaning every neck. Every neck does not have to be plain. As a matter of fact, on a vintage guitar, if you plane a neck, you're, you, you, you're an idiot, really, because I mean, you should just leave that alone. You can, you can, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so. I'm sorry. I, well, it is. You take somebody's very expensive guitar and ruin it. You know, all those finger grooves in an old neck. This don't have any. But all those finger grooves and stuff are there. For the test of time. All you want to do for planing is to clean the surface where the frets go. You know, and unless your neck is way up over here and way up over here, in that case. Probably just throw it away because if you have to plane it that much to get this down and this down, you know, I mean, really, you're not doing anybody any favors, you know. 
unless you're so starving you need that work it just isn't worth it so after you get the strings in the neck off you do part one which is getting the metal pieces out the frets. And then you, frets out mm -hmm. and then you do part two which is the cleanup of the dirt and the glue that was left behind yep and that di that differs from one neck to another exactly how much you'll have to do and won't have to do now you're putting more dust into that hole that's okay This sandpaper, like I said, will barely take the dirt off. It'll take the, gl the gloss and the dirt. The gloss you can put back on, and of course, the guy who plays it's going to put the dirt right back on because most people don't even clean their freaking guitars. Right? And that's 800 grit paper. But that's just that's in this so case, okay? That's, you know, I mean. On this particular mm -hmm. guitar, that's right. Right. None of this is, goes for everything, okay? A fret job is a fret job. Every guitar gets fretted different, okay? If I loosen this rod, all right, and this neck is really loose, okay, and it's not straight, and I, and I have my chance to help this guitar out because I'm doing a refret. Well, then I'm going to cleat the frets much harder in the middle area to pull that neck back like that from the fret job actually pulling it back, okay? If the neck is straight, I'm going to evenly cleat it all the way down. Well, what does cleating mean? Well, cleating means I'm going to take the tangs of the new frets, okay? And I'm literally, remember I told you, that's built a certain way. That only works one way, okay? There's only one thing you can do with that. Put it back in the way it goes. And if it doesn't fit, then what do you do? You, do, you, you can't. You can't do anything because it doesn't fit. So it's depending on how, how loose that fret is, I'm going to twist these tangs out sideways like this. Oh, so they get a little more bite? All right. So you get that. But you're not using those. Now these are twisted this way. Then I'm going to turn the fret around. No, I'm not reusing these, but I'm just showing you. Oh, you're just then I'm going to turn the fret around and I'm going to twist this way. Okay. You can do this however you want. There's all different methods. All right. You've got to remember, it's going to straighten out the bend in the fret when you do this. So you're not going to have your radius anymore. So what do you do? You do this before you bend the fret wire. All right. And then, and then if you have to do it a little bit after, then you can you can you know, rebend the fret wire by hand, like we used to do in the old days. It, you have to have a, a really good feel because you don't want kinks in the fret wire. All right. Before they made fret rollers, okay, we bent fret wire this way. This is just an old piece of fret wire with solder all over it. So, so it's, it's a it, jump. Yeah, so it's, it's pulling my pliers out of my hands here because of the solder. But I'm just trying to show you, you know. That's so you so you'd have your perfect radius and that's sharp, real sharp. Now that when that fret goes in now, okay, not that that fret's going in, see, that fret's gonna be real tight. Okay? If I took a, st so a standard one snap down in there. If I took a standard one and tried to put it in, it's gonna be loose as a goose. Okay? Because <laughs> because these are designed to go into an exact size slot. Brand new. You don't know what these. You're not. Camera's not going to show you what these look like, right? But if you're doing any kind of fret work, you already know what this looks like. Use your brain, figure out how this works, and don't say, "Oh, there must be something I don't know." No, there's nothing you don't know. You look at that really close. That's designed to be used once, okay? Unless they make a fret wire that's got a wider tang, so that these cleats are now wider, it ain't going to work. You're going to have a loose fret job. Your guitar is going to sound terrible, okay? It's not that. You know when people say. Oh, uh, I, I got a, a 50 less Paul, but I, it's not worth anything because it's, it's been, been refretted, so it's not worth a whole lot of money now, right? Well, you know, guys like you and me probably would say that's silly because a, a guitar with a good fret job is going to play real good. Why would it be worth a lot less? Well, it's because most people that don't know anything about frets at all are good players and they got a good ear, okay? And when they pick up a 50s guitar that's been refretted, guess what? It doesn't sound any good anymore, okay? Because they took... The, the 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 seriously cleated frets out because on a 50s guitar those frets are smashed in with a big press okay and they're cleated in and that's you just touch that string to the fret and the tone is just screaming in that guitar they get take them out from a less experienced guy who does the fret job three four five times it's been refretted of course the value is going to go down because if those frets aren't cleated back in if you don't spend and that what i just did there look like two minutes time right there no that's going to take you a lot of time to do 20 to 22 frets, okay, and then bend the wire and then rebend it as it's going because you might find they're getting a little loose in the middle 
as you get around here so now you got to touch those up that are already cut and then hand bend them to touch them up to the exact radius it takes a lot of time to do that but you need solid solid cleating in that fret for it to sound like that old guitar sounded why do people refret guitars well in this case this guy's not so much of a connoisseur of guitars okay i don't even think he really owns any vintage guitars but that's just him okay he wore these frets out they were all worn out all divoted so he's refretting the guitar because they're worn out other people refret a guitar me say i bought a a, a, a gibson um that wasn't a vintage guitar that was a, a a reissue guitar but but i bought it because because it's three thousand dollars instead of three hundred thousand dollars and it's going to be used in the shop right and i pick it up and i play it i can hear immediately that factory fret job sounds terrible okay the guitar has doesn't have the sustain or the power it should have or anything so i don't give a shit if the frets have not a single wear mark on them they're coming out okay and i'm going to clean in a good fret job so a lot of guys have been bringing me guitars for years and years and years that are brand new to refret not refret but to fret because they've never been fretted right Okay. Well, they already were fretted and then in the guitar factory. factories now are getting looser and looser and looser. They don't want any back bow in the necks. They don't want to take any time building the guitar. So they open these slots way up and they drop the frets in into glue. They're not cleated. They're not making any contact. There's no sustain. The tone is terrible. So a fret job is for more than my frets are worn out. It's for, can I make my guitar sound really good? Okay, whatever that was, step two and my rant. <laughs> well, I mean, I think kind of the point here at the end was that you've done this so many times, you're probably making it look a little easier than it would be for somebody who was just starting out. Of course. And so, but we'll do another video for the next step. Okay. So say bye. Cool. Peace out.